Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So this video is sort of part of my unusual money making methods series. I have a couple unusual money makers in this video and a couple random ones or regular ones you may have heard of as well. But this video is more about what you can do to make money on a level three account. So a brand new account, something everybody has been before on old school RuneScape or on RuneScape in general. And this is just making money actually through the game itself, through the cool you know, different things you can find throughout the game instead of just buying a bond or taking out a loan from your friend. I've got four methods for you guys in this video that I'm mainly going to be trying out on my superhero account. Some of them are on my other account, Soup. Level 16 here, so a very low account. And again, all these things you can technically do on a level 3 as well. I want to quickly shout something out though in this video before I get into the methods, and that is the current fight for net neutrality. If you guys aren't sure what net neutrality is, it pretty much means that our ability to have a free and open internet is going to be taken away. There are four big ISPs, I believe, Time Warmer Cable, AT&T, Verizon, and Comcast, and they want to put a lot of websites behind pretty much paywalls. So pretty much your YouTube, your Twitch, your Netflix, all these video streaming sites, those are going to put behind a paywall. Your news sites are going to put behind a paywall. Your social media sites are all going to be put behind a paywall if this vote ends up passing. If this ends up going through, then your ISPs will pretty much have the ability to throttle your speeds on certain websites if you don't pay them for the package to get max speeds on that website. So it's very important, guys. I'm going to leave links in the description. This is actually a big thing now. I know you may have heard about it in the past, but right now is the time to act. I'm going to leave links in the description on how you guys can do it. You can sign petitions. You can call your local congressman. Again, if you guys are really wondering why I'm talking about this on a RootScape video, but this really does affect careers on Twitch, on YouTube, for content creators on the website. It's very, very important that you help out. Again, I know you guys who aren't living in the United States probably don't care about it, but for those of you who do, it's a big, important time to act. So again, I will leave links in the description how you guys can help. But uh, yeah, let's get into the RuneScape video uh, while we're at it. So you guys are a low-level account or a level three. You're just looking to make some money on the game. You don't really want to buy a bond for money. You don't want to ask your friends for money. Well, I have some methods for you guys that might be pretty interesting. But the first thing I want to do and the first thing I want to shout out is the stronghold of security. You guys have all probably heard of it before. If you haven't, it's pretty much three layers of a dungeon. And when you get to the third chest and the third floor, you get yourself 10,000 GP from that chest. So it also makes you put Authenticator on your account, which is something that everybody should have. It keeps your account safe and keeps you pretty much from getting hacked. So I will leave a link in the description for that. When you guys have finished the stronghold in Bar Village, you can walk your way over to Varrock and then head to the southern part of Varrock, just below the walls. But make sure you watch out for the wizards over there that can attack and kill level threes. You want to keep going east until you find the redberry bushes that are south of Varrock, right next to the mine and you want to pick yourself a full inventory of these so two bushes are here both with two berries all you have to do is get yourself a full inventory really simple just hop worlds every time you uh, run out of the bushes here run out of the berries in the bushes you can fill up an inventory in like three minutes just by hopping and getting all these berries once you have finished collecting all these berries you can go ahead and home teleport back to lumbridge or you can run your way down there if you don't have your home teleport available go to the bank on the third floor in lumbridge castle go ahead and bank all your items and you want to run northwest up to this little farm patch up here that you see where there are a bunch of onions growing in the backyard or the little the patch in the back hop three times and get yourself an inventory full of onions as well it takes again not very long at all and then you want to head over to draenor village which is just west and again look out for the jail guards that can actually hit very high as well so pretty much run around them if you want to stay alive and then head over to draenor bank and bank all your onions as well and in there you're going to have all your red berries and your onions go ahead and get out your cash stack and then a full inventory of red berries and head just north over the red house where the wise old man is into this nice little community over here and go to the witch aggie the witch is her name and use your red berries on her and she will start making you red dice for i believe three red berries and then uh, a couple coins, 5 GP as well. And keep using your red berries on her after she makes you one of the dyes. And keep using them until you get a full inventory of red dye. After you've got a full inventory of red dye, go ahead and go back to Draenor Bank and get out a full inventory of your onions as well. And then do the same thing. Go back to Aggie and use your onions on her. It actually only takes two onions and 5 GP for the yellow dye. So you're, you're going to end up with more yellow dye than you are red dye, which is totally fine. Once you guys have all the dyes completed in your inventory, head back up to the Grand Exchange. If you guys just want to run up there, it's like a two and a half minute run if you have full run energy. Or you can walk up there again, not that far of a walk. And as you can see, the dyes actually sell for a decent amount of money. The red dyes are about 400 GP at the moment. The yellow dyes are about 100 GP, a lot less. Sometimes they don't even sell. But if you combine them, they actually go for a decent amount of money. So the yellow and red dye combine together to make some orange dye. And the orange dyes go for over 600 GP and they do instant sell on the Grand Exchange for about 615, which is pretty nice. So if you guys are doing this consistently on a level three, again, very easy to do. All you have to do is collect the ingredients yourself 
and then uh, combine the dyes to get yourself some orange dye. They all insta sell on the organic exchange. So from one inventory, I made about 6.5k, which again really isn't that much GP if you think about it. But on level three, you can take all the cash you can get. A little unusual money maker. I found the fact that you can do it all in Lumbridge pretty much and some barrack. Uh, red berry bushes as well. I found that pretty interesting and something maybe you want to try out if you are ever looking to make some money on a level three. Some of you may not be fans of this next method, but it's something that I did so much back in the day when I first made my account in like 2009, I believe, my super account, and that is just looting in the wilderness. People really underestimate how much money you can make doing this. I know a lot of you guys aren't going to like it. You know, you're picking up other people's loot, making money off that, but hey, it's on the ground for a reason. If you don't pick it up, it's going to disappear. Anyway, so if you guys didn't know, if you don't know about looting, then I'm very surprised. But what you do is you go to the wilderness, and on level 3, it's great because very few people can attack you. You're level 3 since you're so low in the wilderness. Nobody's going to attack you. People do make accounts to kill looters for fun, but it really doesn't happen that often. The only thing is that you're competing with other level 3s for loot as well. So pretty much who has the fastest clicks, who's got the PID on the day. So what you want to do is you pretty much want to look for fights that are going on and you want to find two people who are fighting and then wait for one of them to die or you can just run around and try to pick up random loot you see but what you do is you wait for that fight to finish when more, more person dies or both of them die if you're lucky you stand under the person who died or on top of where they died and they just spam click and try to get the loot that appears now depending on how much loot the other person picked up sometimes you can get really good loot you can get potions you can get sharks which all adds up to a decent amount of money, and sometimes you can get really nothing, you just get bones. So in this clip right here, I waited for a fight to end, and I spam clicked on the ground. I got myself like a ring of recoil, a bunch of sharks, and all of this adds up to pretty much more than I made on the whole die method itself. The die method like profited me 6, 7k. In this case right here, it was 10.2k just off the sharks and the rings of recoil. So it adds up to a lot of money. Obviously, you have to wait a decent amount of time for some fights to end, but if you get lucky, you see a bunch of people die at the same time. Potions at the moment are expensive. Para potions, super combat potions, Sarah brews, restores, they are expensive potions and they do add up to a lot of money if you end up stacking them in your inventory and in your bank. So I ended up looting for about five, six minutes here and after one inventory of looting, I actually made about 43,000 GP. I got myself some sharks, some carambon, some tuna potatoes, some rude knives, and obviously the potions added up as well. So 43,000 GP in like about five minutes, maybe a little bit more, six, seven minutes of just looting in the wilderness is absolutely fantastic. It crushes the die method, but if you guys are one of those people that don't believe in looting to make money, then, uh, I mean, come on, you got to do what you got to do. But again, looting always going to be solid money. It always will be, always has been. It just really depends on if you want to do it or not. Next up is a method that I've actually talked about in the past. It has no requirements. You can do it on a level three, and that's hunting polar kebits for their fur. This is seriously underrated. I can understand why people don't like to do this because of how annoying it is to get up to the place to hunt polar kebits. But the money you can make up this on a level three is absolutely insane. So let's say you have the 10,000 GP from the Stronghold Security. What I would buy is a Camelot Teleport, a Varrock Teleport, a Stamina Potion, and then a Ring of Dueling, as well as a Noose Wand. And what you want to do is teleport to Camelot and then run your way all the way up to the Fremnik area, the Fremnik province, and then keep running north all the way up to the Polar Kebit area. If you guys see that question mark on the minimap, that's where the hunting expert is or the hunting guy you can talk to. You pretty much want to go all the way up there. Once you've made your way, you can see that there's a stair that you can ascend, ascend the stair, and then run up and you will be into the polar kebit hunting area. You will be tracking polar kebits for their fur in order to exchange it for some nice fancy clothes and varic later on to make some nice juicy profit. If you guys know anything about herbivores, they pretty much made tracking on RuneScape relevant again. They made it very popular to track them. If you guys didn't know, it's been around for a very long time. It just isn't used that much because the XP is sort of slow and the rewards from it are sort of mediocre. But the nice thing about this one is that you can do it on a level three. You can walk all the way up there and do it right away since it only requires one hunter. So once you get there, what you want to do is you want to inspect one of the holes that are in the ground and a set of footprints will appear out of that hole. It leads you in a certain direction. You follow those footprints and then search the items around those footprints. So we have like hollow logs. We have the snow drifts. We have the holes that are in the walls over there. You search them until another set of footprints appears. You can see me doing it on screen. And then once you get to the end of the line, you pretty much attack the snow drift once it tells you that there's something hiding under there. And you're going to catch the kebit with the noose that you have that you bought earlier at the Grand Exchange. And you get three items. You get the meat, you get the bones, and you get the fur. And if you look in the inventory, you're like, well, that's actually worth nothing. But now the meat and the bones are pretty much worth jack. But the fur itself goes for a lot of money on the Grand Exchange. So keep tracking these until you get a full inventory of these furs. You can drop the meat, you can bury the bones if you want. It really doesn't matter if you keep those or not. Now this takes about 15 to 20 minutes to get a full inventory of. It takes a decent amount of time compared to other methods 
I guess. That's why I recommend getting a stamina potion because you are going to run out of run energy quick here if you're a level 3 with one agility. It's going to, you know, it's not really going to end up well. You're going to take up a lot of time here if you don't have one on you. And that's why I recommend getting the Ring of Dueling as well so you can teleport out uh, and then use your Varric teleport right away once you get yourself a full inventory. Now, I believe that these are so expensive because peers use them quite often when PKing, I believe. I'm not totally sure why. I believe that they maybe offer some sort of bonus. Not totally sure. If you guys have used them for BKing or you know why they're so expensive, let me know in the comments below. I'm actually pretty curious. So again, get yourself a full inventory and then you want to teleport out with your Ring of Dueling and then teleport to Varrock. Grab your cash tag and then grab all the furs out of your inventory and make your way to the southeastern part of Varrock and enter that area. So once you're in there, you want to go to the clothes shop where the fancy dress shop owner guy is. And he's the guy who can make you all of these polar camo tops. So right click him, do fur clothing, and then you're gonna, I'm going to see this little menu right here. And then make a bunch of the polar camo tops. It doesn't really cost any GP and you can use all your furs to get a decent amount of profit off this. You can make the polar camo legs as well, but they don't make you as much as the tops do. So when you're, I'll show you guys right how much you can make off this. I'm going to show you uh, how much they actually go for. All of those tops go for about 100,000 GP just from hunting for about 15 to 20 minutes. On a level 3 account, the fact that you can make all that money is absolutely insane. And the regular furs go for about 2,000 GP themselves. So in this case, you know, you were still making money off the furs, but the tops themselves go for so much money. And they insta-sell as well. I sold all 13 of them for 126,000 GP. So it's not like you have to merge these. You have to wait a while for them to sell. They insta-sold. So for me to make all that money on a level 3 account that fast is like really hard to beat. It's absolutely insane. And you level up Hunter as well. And it's the best of both worlds. So again, if you guys are a level three account, and you want to make money through maybe Hunter early on, or you just want to make a decent cash act. This takes less than an hour to earn your first, probably about 200,000 GP, which is absolutely amazing. And finally, for the last method here, we're going to head over to the Tree Gnome Stronghold, which yes, you can enter as a level three. For some reason, a lot of people believe that you can't get in here if you don't have a quest done. No, there's no quest. Uh, that you have to do to unlock this area, you can get in here as a level 3. You want to make your way up north over to the big tree where King Nardot is. Head to the first floor and then go to the northwestern part and trade Hudo, who has a bunch of stuff in his Grand Tree grocery store. So all this fruit in here, all these random things for cooking. Now, a lot of these you can actually make profit off on the Grand Exchange, but it's very small profit. At the moment, the biggest thing that I found that made profit were pineapples. Now, unfortunately, a lot of bots are here and are actually hopping around and buying the pineapples and other accounts as well, real players, because they do make money off this method. But pineapples currently make you like... 300 GP profit per pineapple that you buy, which is very good. And again, as a level three, that's a lot of money. About a year ago, I actually ended up buying a lot of the chocolate bars here in the chocolate desk because you can make really good profit off them. But these days, they really don't go for that much GP. I think they're like under 60 GP and you used to be able to sell them for like 300. But these days, the pineapples are the best thing to buy, which is why they're constantly sold out in this shop, unfortunately. But you always have to pay attention to the grand exchange prices because sometimes you can make a lot of profit off an item. For example, you could maybe make profit in the future off pot of creams or the cocktail shakers here. You never know. You always have to experiment with them. So after about 20 minutes of hopping and buying these pineapples, I ended up having about 395 of them, which I sold for about 85 thousand gp so if you pretty much multiply that times three we're making about 240k in an hour just buying these pineapples which really isn't too bad the only thing you're competing with is these bots and the other accounts that are buying the pineapples but it's really not that big of a deal it's just going to take a little bit longer to buy as many as you want but there you have it guys so i have some methods for you there for a level three account to make a decent starter cash if you're looking to do that or even on any level account you can do this technically if you want it as well thank you guys if you guys did make it this far congratulations type level three in the comments you guys are absolute beasts for making this far thank you again for watching and uh, again don't forget about the whole net neutrality thing those links are in the description i love you guys thank you so much for watching hope to see you next time have a good one and peace wow.